welcome to the Teaching Kitchen here at New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. My name is Emily and I'm going to be teaching you how to make a spin on tuna tartare. So usually a dish that's reserved for fancy restaurants, there's a, actually a very simple way to make it yourself that's very flavorful and, um, and healthy. So we're going to be making this using three kinds of fish. We're going to be using a mix of tuna or a king salmon and um, hamachi, which is also a type of amberjack. And so these three fish, you can see in here, the tuna is a little bit darker. The salmon, of course, has that bright um, orange color that our salmon does, and this is the hamachi. Um, so all of these fish I purchased as sushi braid, and that's extremely important to this dish. You must have a sushi braid fish in order to make this, um, which means that you can eat it raw without any risk to your health. Um, so please ensure that when you're purchasing your fish, it is sushi great. Okay, so um, this is the fish we're going to be using, and we're going to season it with a couple of things here, um, some soy sauce, primarily a low sodium soy sauce, extremely important, um, because soy sauce tends to have a lot of salt uh, and sodium. So. You can use um, any kind of low sodium variety of soy sauce that you have. We're going to add that. We're going to be using a little bit of toasted um, sesame oil. Now toasted sesame oil is very different from regular sesame oil. Um, it's a lot darker in color and that's mostly because the sesame seeds have been roasted before they've been pressed into an oil. So it's going to have a really robust kind of nutty flavor um, as opposed to reg regular sesame oil which is completely clear in color and, um, and you know, it doesn't have that nice nutty taste that we're looking for. So that's going to be important and uh, we're going to be using a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and some fresh lime juice. Really, really um, important for this dish is that bright acidic flavor that the lime gives you. And we're actually going to use the whole lime. We're going to use the zest as well. Um, so we're going to be grating grating this on our, the finest holes of our box grater to get the outside, and then we're going to be squeezing it from the inside. Um, so that's going to form our sauce, and then we're going to add in some sesame seeds um, for some color and again some, some nuttiness. So the sesame seeds before they are toasted look like this, and then I just pop them in a pan. I don't add any fat or oil or anything to the pan. Nuts and seeds have their own oil, so um, as soon as they're exposed to a little bit of heat, you'll notice they start to get a little shiny and you get that, that nice fragrant um, nutty smell. So this is just after they've been in the pan, so you can see quite a difference in color there. Really important when you're doing this, don't walk away from the pan. If you uh, walk away, you'll come back to completely burned seeds. So keep that in mind. You kind of want it on a low to medium heat and just move it around on occasion. Um, and also keep in mind of carry over cooking. So just when the seeds are starting to look like they're done, um, you want to take them off the heat immediately because the pan is going to continue to be hot and it's going to actually continue cooking or toasting the seeds. Um, if you have gone a little too far in your seed toasting experience, and um, all of a sudden you think, oh my gosh, I think these are getting a little too dark. Quickly scrape them into an empty bowl, a plate, anywhere where they're not going to continuously be exposed to the heat of the pan. Um, that way they'll stop their, their cooking immediately. All right, so let's get started. We're going to make our sauce first. So you're just going to want a little bowl and whisk to bring these ingredients together. Super simple. We're going to add about a teaspoon or so of our soy sauce. We're going to add a teaspoon or so, ah, tablespoon or so of our toasted sesame. It's so delicious. A tablespoon of our olive oil. And, um, and again, that lime juice and zest. So um, whenever you're squeezing your citrus, it's better if it's uh, room temperature because it'll all the juice uh, membranes inside will kind of relax a little bit at room temperature. When they're in the refrigerator, they seize up because they're cold. Um, so try to have your citrus room temperature. If you can't, it's not a big deal. You'll just have to squeeze a little bit harder. So I'm just going to pat this dry because I've washed it. And um, after washing, you want to make sure that it's really, really dry. It's going to be a lot easier to zest. So like I mentioned, 
just gonna go right around, right? And you don't wanna go too deep. As soon as it starts to get a little pale there, that pale green, turn it. So this is gonna take a little bit of muscle, but the smell, the flavors that you're gonna get are so worth it. You can also freeze your zest. So if you bought a whole bunch of lemons and you just wanna sit in front of the TV and zest your lemons and your limes, you can definitely do that and then put the zest in the freezer and just you know pull it straight from the freezer. It's gonna have the same great taste. All right, we're almost done here. Wanna make sure I get almost every last bit. You can also do this using a microplane. That is a great kitchen tool. I don't have that here, so I'm just gonna use my trusty box grater. Okay. So it's about three to five scrapes and turn, right? So now you can see I've got almost all the zest off of here. And um, just keep in mind, there's always some hiding in on the inside. So I always run my hand, see we had a good full teaspoon that was in there. Run my hand on the inside and kind of gather everything up. Okay, so this is gonna go right in with our sauce. And let's remember we're also gonna juice this. So when you're juicing your citrus, a nice good roll to kind of break up those membranes, cut it right in half, and I'm gonna squeeze this right into the bowl. So, you could do this just using your hands. You could use a citrus um, squeezer or a reamer. Um, you could also use like a set of tongs. So you could clamp them together. I have to switch hands when I do this. I have to clamp them together and then twist inside, right? So you kind of are going right into the center of the line and twisting, this is a very simple way to use your kitchen tools for multiple purposes. Okay, here we go. We'll do one, let's get rid of that. And the other half here. So again, just use your hands if you want a good forearm workout, right? Um, or even better, get in there with the tongs. A fork will work too. If you wanna just, you know, pop a fork in there. Forks can be a little bit sharp on the other end, so. Just be careful you don't go through the line and you know to your hand. So that's the kind of an advantage of these tongs is they have nice rounded edges. All right, so we're almost done with this. It's pretty simple, as I mentioned. Um, we've got the soy sauce, the olive oil, the toasted sesame oil, the lime juice, and the lime zest. Kind of bring that all together and. Um, this recipe usually, I wrote it using scallions, but I don't have any scallions or green onions today. But I do have these beautiful chives. So, I'm just gonna bunch these up, make sort of a neat little package, right? And I'm gonna hold my knife up, up on the bolster here, wrap my hand around, and tucking my fingers as I go, nice slow rocking motion to get these small little beautiful chive pieces. Now again, if you don't have chives, you don't have green onions or scallions, um, you could also use a little bit of shallot, anything with that kind of oniony taste. Red onion would work well too, if you'd like to try that. And, um, and that's just gonna add a nice flavor with your fish, kind of balance, it, balance everything out. All right, pop that right in there. So, a good sharp knife is essential when you're cutting your herbs. You really want to make sure that you are cutting through the herbs and slicing them and not kind of crushing your way through them. All right, gorgeous. So we have our fish, we've got our sauce, we've got our toasted sesame seeds, and I'm going to add a little bit of diced cucumber just for some crunch. Um, it's also sort of a nice refreshing flavor. So I have some cucumber here kind of in this shape, kind of fat, fat, that's all shape, stick shape, right? And I'll just 
dice it up to smaller pieces. So this is gonna add a little crunch, a little freshness to the dish. There we go, that goes right in with the fish. Um, so if you're working with a you know, cucumber, you wanna kind of get it into a nice slab. So I cut it in half first, and then I cut vertically to get these slab pieces. Um, and then I just went lengthwise to get long sticks. There we go. And then across to get little dice, you know, cubes. All right. If you um, have any trouble digesting cucumber seeds or skin, feel free to scrape those seeds out, peel the cucumber, no problem. Okay, so here we've got everything. Our three fish, our cucumber, we're gonna add our sauce. Make sure you get all of that good flavor. Okay, and I'm just gonna toss this together gently with the sesame seeds. And you're done. So, beautiful, refreshing, you know, summertime meal. Um, if you don't feel like turning on your stove or your oven, it's too hot to cook, uh, but you wanna get a nice protein-filled dish, maybe you don't have a grill, whatever the case may be. Maybe you just love sashimi, raw fish, and you wanna find a way to enjoy it in your own home. So these can be, this can be served over a bed of quinoa or some rice um, with some, you know, extra veggies. I actually love to mix mango and avocado in with this. It just makes it extra, you know, sumptu sumptuous and sweet and just really, really yummy. So if you've got some mango and avocado you want to add right in here, you could definitely do that. So at this point, you would let this marinate for about an hour or so to really let the flavors um, kind of get enmeshed with the fish and everything else. Um, if you were plating this, you could get your plate ready and just kind of heap it up high in a little tower. It looks really elegant if you want to, if you have a mold also, you could definitely use a mold for it and um, do it that way. So. You know, whatever, whatever you want to do is fine. I think as long as you are happy with your plating, um, this is really lovely. And then you can, you know, put some mango or avocado slices around. Um, you can serve this with plantain chips, which is really yummy, or um, like sweet potato chips is also good. Um, again, serve it over a bed of quinoa rice. It's full of protein. Serve it over um, some sh shredded red cabbage is really beautiful as well if you want to try that. And um, you know you have a plate with all the red cabbage kind of on the bottom and put mound this on top. And there you go. So this is your sort of spin on a on a tuna tartare. And um, again, please make sure that you buy sushi grade fish. Um, very, very important to this dish. So I hope you give it a try and thank you so much for watching this video and hope to see you at another um, event soon. Thank you.